With old St. Nick just around the corner, workers at Shelton, Washington put in long hours to ensure early arrival of selected Yuletide trees to all parts of the country. Every branch bears the Christmas spirit. At Seattle's Naval Air Station, a special load of Christmas cheer is put aboard a plane bound for various points in the icy northern wastes, where our troops still protect our Arctic outposts. Merry Christmas, Joe. All over the nation, eager shoppers parade before store windows, packed with bright and shining presents for all the family, especially the youngsters. And it's a big problem to make a selection without breaking Santa. Pretty little girls and big beautiful dolls and happy tots galloping hobby horses are found in every toy department. A handful of enticing puppetry brings a glow of anticipation. And if you want father's heart to beat faster on Christmas morning, have Kris Kringle deliver a load of these streamliners to the children. If the Limited is held up at the bridge, well, presto! And the Christmas flyer gets the green light. Everybody's friend has something for everyone. If you know of someone he might miss, open up your heart and have a Merry Christmas. I have taken over the duties of the Chief of Staff of the Army from a great predecessor and, of course, am honored by the selection. But I'm keenly aware that I have taken up this duty at a critical time in the affairs of the nation and of the Army. To win the war, you raised the greatest army in our history. We are now engaged in tearing down that army at an unprecedented rate. At the same time, we have commitments in foreign lands, commitments which require military strength. Those commitments were made in good faith to help solidify the peace that has been so dearly won. Very soon, those two processes will clash. This is your army, and it is your decision as to which course we shall follow. The decision once made, it is the duty of the War Department to carry it out. For my part, I hope that we secure that peace. One family in a Southern California community is proud today, and that's the Masudas, whose Japanese-American son died heroically during the terrific battle for Casino, Italy. Sergeant Masuda was cited for the Distinguished Service Cross two weeks before he was killed. After a flight from Washington, General Stilwell presents the medal posthumously to the sergeant's sister. A brave American soldier is remembered, and his loyal family is an honor to the country for which he died. Surrounded by youthful members of his flock, Archbishop Spellman of New York opens a nationwide campaign to collect canned supplies for war-devastated people of all faiths. These boys and girls are actively engaged in a campaign for canned goods that will begin throughout the United States this coming week. And these boys and girls, by their gifts of these canned goods, hope to heal and strengthen the wasted and worn bodies of other boys and girls throughout the world who are suffering and starving. And uh, during this week, every Catholic parish in the United States, 15,000 of them, will act as a receiving station for canned goods to help the poor and the suffering children and the people throughout the world without discrimination of race, creed, or color. Arriving at Washington, D.C., the Mixmaster, piloted by Lieutenant Colonel H.E. Warden, completes a record-breaking non-stop flight from Long Beach, California. Co-pilot Captain Glenn Edwards shared the job on the swift flight of 5 hours 17 minutes, topping the former unofficial mark of 6 hours from Seattle. 
the Speedy Douglas bomber gets her nickname from her radical tail propellers, which sing a mighty song. Not to be outdone in design, the Navy displays its newest, the Boeing tandem prop fighter plane. The single 3,600 horsepower engine drives her two propellers in opposite directions. The Navy says she'll do better than 450 miles per hour. The versatile craft can be used as a fighter, torpedo plane, bomber, attack plane, or interceptor. A real addition to our protective air forces. <laughs>